Hi greetings and welcome back i hope you all are doing good so this video is going to be about this hw775 module this is the newly launched module for lithium ion batteries now this can charge discharge also give 5 volts output 5 volts 2 amp output from your 1s lithium ion cell and it has some features like over discharge protection over charge protection and also short circuit protection So my plan is to use this in one small project where I am going to use this lightings as a part of my YouTube videos and these are purple lightings so I am already using this warm white light and now I am also going to add this purple lights with it and for this I am planning to use this power bank batteries 10000 mAh 3.7 volts lithium ion battery so I am going to pair this with this one so I am going to get 5 volts 2 amps if this works as it claims and then i can just boost it up from 5 volts to 12 volts and power this this just only requires 7 watts for 5 leds so without wasting any further more time let us get started so let us look into the specifications of this module now this is the website from where i purchased this i will give the link in the description So if you look into the key specs of this you can see that it says charging voltage is between 4.5 volts to 5.5 volts technically you can use your phone's charger to charge your lithium ion battery with this module next up we have the charging current between 0 to 2.1 amps so the quiescent current is 100 microamps that's the idle current of the module it's a very less current value full voltage is 4.2 volts plus minus 1% that's the voltage that it charges your battery with the discharge current is 0 to 2.4 amps now with this i don't feel like this is the boost output current this is the maximum current that it can intake while it's giving the boost output Then you have some other details in here and these are the protection features. We will test all the features here and if you see the module it is having one key or one button in here. So two functions one is you just have to press it fast but not too fast it should be more than 50 milliseconds less than 2 seconds then it would switch on your boost output and if you press it twice in a row within 1 seconds then the boost output will switch off. Now let us go to the bench and test all its features. Okay so now if you see this middle two wires battery and ground these are for the lithium ion cell connection vn and ground this two are your input charging voltage and the out 5 volts and ground is the boosted output voltage so now we will connect the power supply to the battery connections so that it can mimic the battery in here lithium ion cell in here and i've set it to 4 volts and i've set the current limit to 1 amps let's connect it and see how it reacts okay so if i switch it on cool nothing happened now if i press this button once it should switch on the boosted output okay so that's the boosted output on and it shows that it's not 100% charged if i just press it twice it should switch off the boosted output okay so this part is fine now what i'm going to do is i'm going to connect one electronic load with this and let's see how the boosted output behaves okay so i've connected this to output wires to this electronic load so if i switch it on now it's very hard to put everything in the frame Now if I switch on the electronic load it shows 0 volts now if I switch on the boosted output it shows 5 volts as you can see I don't know if it's clear or not but yeah it's 5 volts now let us load the output so now let us go to 0.5 amps okay close to 0.5 amps the voltage is 4.6 volts now i don't trust this voltmeter we will check with a multimeter shortly it is not hot at all it's behaving fine we are now doing 4.4 volts 0.5 amps and here we are drawing 0.69 0.7 amps 2.76 watts let me check the output voltage with a multimeter we will see what happens here 
okay that's what i suspected so it's exactly 4.976 volts is close to 5 volts only what this is reading it's wrong so even at 0.5 amps it's giving out close to 5 volts so we will load it more and see what happens to the voltage i wish i could keep the multimeter also in the frame but i really can't so now let's set the current limit from 1 amp to 3 amps okay so it's 3 amps now now we'll start loading the output we'll directly go to 1 amp okay so it's 1 amp it's still 4.9 volts 4.95 volts actually and 1 amp in here we'll check the current with the clamp meter again okay the current is proper 1.08 1.09 amps and here also it says 1.08 so this is reading fine let us check the temperature of the ic and it's fine yep so now let's test one of the feature of this board we will see if the under voltage cutoff happens and we'll see at what voltage it happens so i'm slowly going to reduce the voltage that we are providing to this module basically i'm mimicking the battery voltage so if i set here the cursor and if i slowly decrease the voltage we are at 3.8 volts we are still having 4.9 volts output slowly reducing it down we are at 3.5 volts now still giving out 4.9 volts and the current is still the same 1.08 amps slowly going to reduce the voltage again 3.4 volts 3.3 volts still giving the output 3.19 3.1 okay it's switched up now so at 3 volts the under voltage cutoff circuitry kicks in and now if i try to switch on the output i'll just put the load to zero even if i try to switch on the output it nothing happens because it's at under voltage cutoff now so this feature works under voltage cutoff now let us test what is the maximum current that it we can input to this module so i'll again increase the voltage to 4 volts if i switch on the output yes the output is switched on 4.9 volts here 5 volts okay so this is another feature since no current was drawn for some time so it went to the standby mode if i again switch on the output 5 volts let's monitor this current here and we will slowly go to 2 amps okay cool we are getting 1.5 amps in here we are still reading 4.93 volts it's dropped from 5 volts but it's still usable voltage increasing the current okay so the limit was 2.4 amps we will see if it really happens no 2.4 amps at this moment we will try to draw more okay we are drawing 2 amps in the output the voltage is still 4.9 volts here it's 2.84 amps try to increase the current more is it hot uh, not really just warm i can touch it easily so we are 3 amps so is it ah okay okay it drops so it current limits at that point and if we again turn down the current it starts the voltage again and if i slowly increase the current let us see it 
2.12 still fine 2.15 still fine 2.18 2.2 so if i increase the current a little bit more above 2.2 amps it switches off the output it's a great thing now one thing i want to check is Suppose it's drawing some 1.9 amps in the output. If I click, double click this, it should switch off the boosted output. And it does. It's nice. Okay. This is fine. Okay. So let us do the short circuit test. So if I click it once, switch on the output. So it's giving 5 volts. Now if I just touch the two leads. Okay. There is a short circuit protection also in this board which works not pointing it to the camera okay it's a nice purple light mm, so it's it's not even 7 watts it's 6.36 watts at 12 volts 530 milliamps so this is what we require in the output so what i'm planning to do now is i will connect this power supply to this module and this module output to this module input and this is already clocked to 12 volts so I'll now directly connect this 12 volts to the LEDs and let's see how it performs because that's the place where I want the usability of this module. Okay, so I've connected this LED setup to this boost converter followed by this module. So if I switch it on, it should light up everything and we are drawing around 1.99 amps and we are at close to 8 watts. And if I check the voltage, we are at 11.8. Eight. it's jumping around because of the connection so it's 11.8 so now I increase the voltage if I switch it on we can see that we are drawing around 2.57 amps and we are here at 12.3 volts but if I turn down the voltage in here to say 3.5 volts okay one bad thing it doesn't update on the go since I have reduced the voltage, it should have shown me that, okay, the voltage is reduced. It's not 100%, but it's not updating in here. Okay, so we are at 3.5 volts. And now if I switch it off. So now if I try to switch it on, it doesn't switch on. It goes to current limit because now we are at low voltage 3.5 volts. And to produce the same amount of current in the output, we need a higher current in the input to match the wattage and that's how the boost converters work so we need more current at lower voltage less current at higher voltage that's how the wattage always remains the same and now we need a higher wattage and if we just switch it on it doesn't switch on but if i again increase the voltage to 4 volts and i switch it on it glows so we have to calculate this current precisely at what current it will always switch on because it the under voltage cutoff is at uh, 3 volts so we have to see at 3.1 volts what amount of current it can produce in the output so I'm hoping that we cannot actually give out 12.3 volts in the output we need something lesser okay so I tried different conditions and it seems like when you are 3.29 volts this is the voltage where I really want my lithium ion batteries to get charged not at 3 volts so we are down to 11.2 volts here so we cannot go anything higher than 11.2 volts because that would exceed the current limit of the input and if we go down to 3.3 volts if it switches off and then if you try to switch it on at higher voltages and higher current requirements it doesn't switch on and another thing i just saw is that when it's down to 3.3 volts it would start blinking to show that hey i want charging the charging process is also good you can see it's blinking and my battery was already at 3.9 volts so it's down to only one bar here so that's why it's only one bar is blinking and we are charging at 5 volts 0.96 amps Okay, so I made all the connections in here. I did not record the process because it's pretty simple. There is nothing to explain really. I'll just quickly go through all the connections in here. So this is the charging port USB-C and there is a process of uh, making the USB breakout boards to work. Now you just can simply put the USB breakout board in here because for USB-A to USB-C this will work fine. 
but for USB C to USB C type of cables, this won't work. You need to pull down registers of 5.1K from C1 and C2 to ground. This is very important and if you don't know about this, please do let me know in the comments. I will make a separate video on this on how to use the breakout boards for this USB C. And then there is this charging and discharging module and I just made one small slot in here so that I can see the battery indication. This is the push button to control the functions of this board. I just soldered two wires beside the switch that was already present and I have another switch momentary switch in here. And this is the on off switch for the lights. This is our battery. I just used foam tape to stick it in and this is our boost converter 5 volts to 12 volts. So I just need to now screw it down to this and that's it end of the project. Okay, so I bolted down the screws in here. Now if you see if I just click it once, it switches on the 5 volt output, boosted output. Uh, you can see the LEDs in here and if I switch it on now, yes, so the light lights up. And if I click it twice, yes, it switches off. This switch is not very responsive, but it works and that's it. So I'll be using this as a part of my video lighting from next videos. So thank you for watching with all the patience and if you like the video please do like share and subscribe and also don't forget to press the bell icon for notifications. So till then bye bye.